Praise the Lord, everybody. <clears throat> the Lord's been talking to me about a very powerful topic of discussion as far as doctrine and act, you know, more than the doctrinal debate about it, just power that people need. So, I wrote a title which doesn't even get into 1% of really what it, what it is, but we have to describe it as something so you know where we're going. I'll call this affectionately Victorious Warfare, Miracles Destroy Evil Strongholds. Miracles, the miraculous. And let's look in Scripture at... <laughs> oh, I love this so much. Let's look in Scripture at Matthew chapter 15. Let's begin there. 21st verse. Gentile shows her faith. Faith is what unlocks the miraculous. Being in the right place at the right time also does that. Being with the right people also does that. We see that right here in Matthew 15, from the 21st verse. To the end of Matthew 15, just that one half of the chapter alone, from 21 to 35, 39, we see the miraculous because of a place, faith, the miraculous anointing, and, and Jesus was even in the place when he departed. In verse 20, what is it, 29, 29, he departed from there and skirted around the Sea of Galilee. I've been there, it's beautiful. And went up on the mountain and sat down there. Then great multitudes came to him. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. You see that? He went somewhere. He went somewhere. You see my Bible bookmarkers. There's Mr. Cheetah. I have, an, I have others. I have another one here. Mr. Giraffe. Beautiful, eh? And I, I want to go deep into this. It's something that the Lord put on my, my heart, but I knew, I, I had a feeling I couldn't get into it. What day and where I'll get into this, I don't know yet, but we'll see. And I want to talk about destroying... Other strongholds. I want to give a list of strongholds to be destroyed. And it's, it's, it's very fierce and powerful what God can do when he, when he has your attention. In the realm of um, seeing what the enemy did to try to mess your life up. When there's problems... When there are problems that you would, might have, or do have, there's something situated either in you or around you that's causing that thing to linger on. And the minute the miraculous begins to flow, I want to explain what the miraculous is. The miraculous is amazing. It's not just, you know, the miracle of someone getting healed or delivered like the, the woman came to Jesus, and uh, we see here in Matthew 15, uh, said her daughter was possessed, and, and then, you know, Jesus began to heal people and began to describe and how he began to feed. It says the 4,000, and another place says 5,000. Which is it? Having compassion on the multitude, because he continued, they continued with him three days, and they had nothing to eat. Here it says 4,000. Everybody always just says 5,000. Oh, well, whatever. It's still... Then the little boy brought the seven loaves and the two fish. You know what happened then? The miraculous happened of multiplication. I did a series called, and this is going to become a book, but I, I did a series called Breaking the Back of Lack. This is very powerful. And... Um, we, the Lord doesn't want us to have any lack in our life. So everything 
Victorious spiritual warfare comes from us addressing everything that's wrong. Looking at it, addressing it, and getting things moved around. You see the movement here. The woman came to Jesus. Jesus was somewhere. He healed the multitudes. Then he got tired of being there. Then he got up and moved, and he went somewhere else. And then, the, then the, that was a place where the people were going to come to him. God was showing him where to be. If you think you need to just be like sitting in one, in one scenario all your life, you know, who's, who's stupid, you or the, or the people that are troubling you? They are. You're brilliant. And God will give the answer and fix everything. The Lord is the master at, at giving divine connections, divine relationships. That's a, a band for my hair, you know. I'm not doing that other thing like people do, you know, in case someone didn't see it. This is the thing where I tie my hair back to be more comfortable. That's what it is. Let me explain. Okay. All right. Prayer and prophecy go together and they begin to bring forth the miraculous. When someone's praying, it brings about protection. Even when, like when I pray for someone, I become protective of them. I become a protection uh, uh, entity for them. Prayer is powerful. When I'm seeing answers to prayer that seem to be, or things happening that are good, there's a realm of me seeing that I spoke this before, I prayed this before at length. So the fact that it's happening now, there's no, there's no shock or no surprise because this was prayed about. And I was telling somebody, one of my dear people, I said, do you know how, how much I've prayed about this? How much I've spoken this? So to see it, it's like absolutely expected. And I wonder about a lot of people, are they charting a course anywhere? I don't, want to, I don't want to get into that. I just want to speak about how, how the miraculous power of God gives you direction, correction, deliverance, healing, but also puts you in your right mind and on the right path. It's miraculous for God to lead the steps of someone and, so, and lead the steps of someone to you. That's as much of a miracle as it is when Jesus delivered the woman's daughter in Matthew 15, or fed the fourth, five, four or five thousand, and plus the women and children, however many there were, and healed the great multitudes, the same way those occurrences and manifestations were miraculous, so it is also miraculous when God begins to set you up in a good way in things in your life. And I say amen. Whether you do or not, help yourself. I'm saying a big amen because it's happening for me. There's nothing more ridiculous than being stuck in your journey. Every day should be a new thing. So how does it happen? I want, I see, I'm the how-to person, the how-to teacher. I hear a lot of preachers, they preach about, you know, everything's going to be all right. You know, hallelujah, you got the miracle, the breakthrough. I'm like, yeah, you know, and everybody shouts, well, how am I going to get it? What do I do? What's my part? I know what God can do, but what can I do? You know, and, and some people, they never get to it. They just talk about the what. They never talk about the how. Let me tell you how. Prayer. Prophecy. Praying and prophesying. What is prayer? Communication with God back and forth. A dialogue. Die means two. D-I means two. A log. Log can be like a, what, you take, you make a log of record of things. Things are being said that are brilliant and intelligent, not just uh, a ritual. Huh? How? Prophesying. What is prophecy? Prophecy is speaking out loud by revelation that comes to you by the Holy Spirit, which is supernatural. The mind of God, and then that begins to create something. 
by a prophet, Hosea 12, 13. Now this is the office of the prophet in the governmental realm. Not everybody walks in this. An evangelist or a pastor or a preacher, which there seem to be, you know, hundreds and thousands crawling around everywhere, some doing well, some doing not well, some in between, some called, some were sent, some just went, you know, all the above. Some are self-aggrandizing, some are saying, you know, the, you know the, these idiots in the media, they always say the self-styled one or the self-appointed, you know, self, so they say. Well, that's mocking, you know, that's, that's, that's the evil cynicism of, of, a, of a demonic, <clears throat> demonically inspired person who wants to persecute the church or whatever. You know what I mean? But some people really are like that. I got to say something right now by the Holy Ghost. And I didn't plan to say this, but this is really amazing. I heard a man of God, a man of God going on and on about this, and I thought, oh boy, this is convicting. He's talking about what's your connection to someone else? Who are you connected to? Who is your, who is your, 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 your spiritual lineage, you know? Who's your father? The one that didn't know his father in the movie. And the guy came and said, I am your father. Then Austin Powers, you know, they did a spoof on the whole thing that... I am. <laughs> who's, your, who's your daddy? Who are you connected to? Do you know how powerful that is? First of all, it's God, of course. But then there's, there's, there are people that are good, and then you could also replicate what they've done as you uh, step on further. So these people here in Matthew 15 found their father. He was Jesus. Jesus was sent to the Father and he, to bring the miraculous. So how are you getting the miraculous? It doesn't just come out of... Out of out of thin air, as they would say, it comes from your connection with heaven. And God does that in several different ways. So prayer, powerful. Psalm 1, I'm, I'm looking at one of, the, one of the books here. Psalm 119, one, verse 154 says, I plead my cause, or plead my cause, O Lord, and deliver me, quicken me according to your word. Psalm 119, verse 161 says, Princes have persecuted me without a cause, but my heart stands in awe of thy word. The word of God is a how-to. Jesus is even the Word. God, you know, in the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God, and the Word became flesh and dwelt among us, John 1, 1 said. And then the 12th verse said, To as many as received him, he gave power to become the sons of God. So you have to look at uh, the, power, the, <laughs> the power of the Word, what it can actually produce. The miraculous fits into all these categories. The word producing. Let me tell you something. The word that you stand on and make demands upon will help you um, get the results you want. The word that you like command to work for you. Do people even do that? I think the church, let, let me tell you something. Let me, let me tell you the kind of preacher I don't ever, I'm, I've never been, I don't ever want to be, I never can be, because I'm anointed for real. The preacher that doesn't even teach people the tenets of the faith on how to get a victory. Not that they need to be the one, you got to come to me, I'm the entertainer, I'm the, I'm the noisemaker, and I'm the big whatever. And then, you know, uh, 
They never teach anybody anything on how to get a victory for themselves. That's disgraceful. One of the attributes of the Holy Ghost is the fear of the Lord. If you don't reverence God to want to do His real assignment, which is teaching people how to have victory, you're not really in the right flow of what we call the gospel. So the miraculous moves in many ways. Demonstrative miracles of deliverance and healing, but also in direction, correction, and also unveiling, uncovering of things. Like something could be going on in your world that you don't see it for a long time. I don't know why. I think that's a tragedy. I hate it. I, I don't understand how you, 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 even good people, even gifted people, even powerful people, there's things they don't see well enough. And then God begins to really show you, show you, show you, show you, see it. And then he even brings like advancement in things, better options, better things, ways of doing things, new opportunities, new people, new things, new, new, new. And you go like, wow, this is great. But how did it, where did it come from? It came from prayer. It came from prophecy. Now you look at whole cities and nations that are being revolutionized because of the prophetic word. And, and Amos 3.7, he says, Surely I'll do nothing except I first reveal my secret to my servant, the prophet. The prophet is the one who's the vocal mouthpiece. A prophetic people are, are, are just that. They should be prophetic. They should know things. But they're, they're, not, the prophet is, they're not the prophet per se. The prophet is the one with the microphone. I feel like this is a preliminary... <clears throat> segue into something that I'll get into in another <clears throat> another session. The Lord, the Lord wants me to go deep into it. I, I you know what? I don't, uh, I don't feel it today to go into this other thing. I'm gonna, I'm gonna bring a drop of uh, an atomic, powerful realm of revelation that I think no one, I haven't heard anybody teach on it. I don't know what day I'll do it. I've been wanting to do it this weekend. I've been so busy. But uh, destroying all kinds of strong, all kinds of strongholds, and I'm going to name them and go through them, and how you can actually break and destroy them out of your life and your world. And everything will become different. You know, a man can only change through revelation. I guess I'd include a woman, a woman, because you're, 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 we're humans, all of us, touched by the Spirit of God. You can only change by revelation. If you don't have the revelation, you won't change anything. I don't want to get into like ob observing people because it's, it's sometimes it's too frustrating to talk about. But I look at certain people and they, they don't have it. Because you just see that no matter how much you say or do, they don't, they don't get it. That's okay, though. But God's big picture will, will come to pass. His big plan of action will happen in this day and hour. And we're really... Wow. Revelation is the key to advancement. You have to see it to have it. If you want to see something and get it and go after it, you have to first see it. And then you're going to say it because speech unlocks something to, be, to bring you into a realm of possession. Confession is there, but possession is better. But possession comes more from the sight realm of seeing the thing that you want so strongly that you'll do almost anything. Everything under the sun that's righteous and legitimate in the realm of co taking conquest and going after it to get it. And until you see it and, 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 to, and start beginning to say it, this realm of conquest and acquisition is not open to you. Isn't that, isn't, that, isn't that amazing? Think about that. 
if you don't see it in your spiritual eye, in your mind's eye, you cannot begin to possess it. Because it, otherwise it, it would be just by accident. You think people that do great business and all that, you think they just, it just like was like what the devil called the Big Bang Theory, the big explosion, you know, kaboom. And then all these beautiful things fell into place. Let me tell you something. This with these these patterns here and this uh, clothes that I'm wearing and etc. were done by artists that did something. This didn't just all fall out of an explosion and all of a sudden it was like that. Look at the creation of the animals, the zebra, the white stripe and the black stripe from the nose to the back and like that. And then it's stamped on the DNA and then they reproduce of their own kind. <clears throat> that was not from some explosion. The Big Bang is in people's <laughs> dumb heads, if they would ever believe such a thing. I think even the devil himself, he's laughing. So he, he's an evangelist, and evangelizing to get people away from God and deceive them, because how stupid was he to rebel against God? God kicked him out. It's irreparable. He knows it. He's already judged. Jesus said, I'm coming. That the, he said, he's, he's walking around, but he, he has nothing in us. And he said, the prince of this world is already judged. It's already a done thing. So the saddest thing in the, in, in the, in the world is to be on his side in any way. So a how to get deliverance and, and a victory in the realm of warfare is to go after everything and begin to try to fix it. I'm going to say that again. The how-to of the miraculous manifestation, there's a part of the miraculous that God comes and does sovereignly, but there's the part of, of you going after something that you say there's no other option but for me to have this. But how does that begin? It begins through the dawning of it in your imagination. Lift your hands, somebody, to God and say, Lord, please. Show me. I, I feel very disturbed that people that uh, are so behind. I don't know what happened to them. You know, another thing I said to someone yesterday, someone was talking about somebody's situation, whatever, and I begin, I'm training certain people. I, 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 I begin to explain to somebody, uh, that's not my burden, that's not my problem. I didn't do it, it's not my fault. I'm not going to be abused by the thought that I should have anything to do with that scenario. And I have no, you know, what they'd say, uh, misnomers, misconceptions, qualms, or uh, uncertainties or certainties about saying that. You know, people have their own issues. Everyone has their own thing. Here's the, power, here's the powerful key to breakthrough. And I don't have the book in front of me on the desk here. It's in my office. But I have uh, a book called the, the, uh, about, about Focus that I'm going to release soon. And focus is like a laser light beam that shines towards something. And if you concentrate the light enough to make it into a laser, it could even cut through steel. It could even cut through bones. It could even cut through skin and tissue. It can cut through. What it is is concentrated light. Can you imagine that a laser, laser therapy for laser surgery or anything like that, that they, it's, it's light concentrated to such a level that it actually penetrates something. And that's powerful. I mean, light in you towards something. The light came on, as we say. <laughs> and you, you, uh, you see it. Now all you can do is go after it and possess it. Certain things you might have thought you wanted, some way you thought you wanted them, but you didn't see it, you didn't see it strongly enough in you. It didn't become like an epiphany, a revelation to the point where you're like, I, I can't not have this anymore. I have to have it now. Think about that.
when Jesus got in the flow and he began to go and do all these miracles, was he thinking about doing something else? No. Was he on assignment from God to do that? what he was doing there? Yes. Was he heavily anointed with the Holy Spirit without measure to make all those things happen? Absolutely. Was there another option to him doing that? No. Because he, he didn't allow it. He didn't entertain it. If he had not gone in the power of the Spirit in all these places we see in the, in the four Gospels, none of it would have happened. You know, off of every statement I'm making here, I'm feeling there's like another revelation if you just let that, if you let that sink in for a second. If he had not gone and focused on that thing that he was supposed to do, he would never have seen it happen, even Jesus himself, because he didn't apply himself to it. So I'll go back to this thing about people that have a vision for something, even people in the world that desire to do something great in the realm of uh, building a business em empire. Do they feel like it's an option for them not to have what they're going after? No. They've conquered that in their own mind. And these are people that don't even, they're not, church, they're not from church, they don't speak in tongues, they don't read the Bible. They wouldn't confess or profess to know Jesus. Hmm? Imagine that. And they still can get it done. Why? Because they focused. They focused on what they wanted. I don't know if anybody has, has brought this together, that a realm of the miraculous to destroy evil, evil being anything that's slowing you down or that's in your way. And tied it to the miraculous to say, the miraculous flow of the Holy Ghost is to give me direction and correction. This scripture came up, uh, two scriptures that both have the same numbers in them, 119. Isaiah 119. 119, one, ver, chap, Isaiah chapter 1, verse 19 said, If you be willing and obedient, you'll eat the good of the land. But if you refuse and rebel, you'll be devoured, for the mouth of the Lord has spoken it. So you choose or you lose. But I had, it had to come from your mind, from a conscious decision, to see it happen. And if you don't get there, it can't happen. Eat the good of the land. If you refuse the will of God, he didn't say, it, it, it's even worse. He didn't say you, you just won't get blessed. He said you'll be destroyed. Proverbs also talks about a place where having a foolish environment causes destruction. The wise walk with the wise and become wiser, but the companion of fools will be destroyed. Think about it. Think about that. Iron sharpens iron, another scripture says. So what do you... Uh, what are you doing? Who are you with? It was an old song. What are you doing? Who are you with? Where are you at? Everybody should try to locate themselves. Again, I feel very strongly by the Spirit because I don't also want to get meddling in the mud, getting muddied in the mud of people's issues and problems. I want to speak the truth. People can catch it where they're going to catch it. <clears throat> I'm bringing a pure teaching here on how to destroy evil, get rid of strongholds, flow and walk in the miraculous, and, and things will begin to happen that you just dreamed about for a long time. They'll begin to manifest. And I say we can't wait to see it. So like the Lord will speak through his prophet and say, this is my mind. 
this is my counsel, this is my will. It's up to everybody to catch it and, uh, and you know, understand it by revelation and begin to walk it out. And those that don't, we, we're dismissed. We're disassociating ourselves, me and God, for the moment. I mean, you think, oh, God just, you know, all he does is care about my progress. Yeah, in one way, yeah, he'd like to see it, but in another way, he also leaves the responsibility to us. If you think the gospel is just about, I receive a miracle, I receive a miracle, I don't have to do anything, I can live any way I want, I can do anything I want, and then God just has to, uh, you know, I just have to receive, receive, receive the hyper, the hyper miracle crowd. I just got to get a miracle, I got to get a miracle. Like, well, it's like, and some people like with the anointing, they just think they want to grab it. I heard, I heard Benny Hinn say this uh, the other day we were together. Oh, huge event. And he said, uh, I'm tired of people asking me for my anointing. He's, he, like he wants to tell them, go get your own and leave me alone. I can't, it's not mine to give you anyway. And, you know, people ask me about the anointing that's upon my life. They say, it's so powerful, I'd like to have it. And I look at them and say, you know what? I've been through things in this walk and this journey that I don't know if I'd wish them upon an enemy, never mind upon a friend. And I'd say to somebody else, it's very, this anointing is very, very, very expensive. And usually when I say that, they get convicted and they kind of back out like the rich young ruler. Jesus rebuked him and said, do this, do this, do this. He went away sad. You never hear about him again. He missed it. He missed his blessing. He thought, oh, I, I'm going to lose by giving things away. Let me tell you something. Jesus was, was testing his heart, but he was also, he was also, one thing about God, he was also going to count that as a seed for increase. That guy wouldn't have remained poor. God is good. Now, this is deep, isn't it? I would like to speak faster, but when I'm in this realm, I'm processing, then I'm giving, you just, just, just flow with me here. And I'm not like anybody else, and of course, that's good. That's a good thing. You know? Soon I'll be out in some big events, big churches, on the stage, walking back and forth, you know, preaching like fire, and we're going to put those online. You know, we mix and we mix up a lot of, we mix and match a lot of things here. But this realm of teaching is something, something really, really something. It's really something amazing, something else. You are the catalyst for growth if you can change. If you can't change your mind, you can't change your steps toward your destiny. Someone write that down. I must change my mind in, the, in a good way, not like in a negative way, toward taking steps to my destiny. Have you ever felt like, probably every day, most people feel this every day. Again, I'm not getting into meddling of people's issues. I'm just speaking it out. Let it, let's all catch it. I'm catching it like everyone else is catching it as I'm speaking it here. This is coming from heaven. To get a hold of the big plan of action that God has. Have you ever thought about, probably every day, why, are, why aren't I there? Why hasn't this happened? Why does this not seem to work? Well... Here's the answer. It's not about why. Someone said that people are so evil and people start going. Because a righteous person would feel like shocked. How could somebody do that? Why would they do that? I said, no, 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 that's not the issue. They did it. The issue is now, what do we do now? And what will God do to them? We'll rejoice to see the, the, the judgment of God upon people because they sure do deserve it. That's another platform altogether. So, the key is along the way, you have to shake yourself off, like water down a duck's back. The, the feathers have some coating on it that water, it's like their seals have a sealant in the oil on their feathers, whatever. 
so the water will just roll down and it won't seep into the feathers that it gives them their buoyancy and they can continue to move. If they got sopping wet and soaked with the water, they'd be cold and upset and they wouldn't be able to move fast. So God puts something in, you know, on the feathers when the water comes, like it just, it kind of just goes off. You got to be like that. You have to have yourself sealed to all these things that the devil's doing and what, what evil people do. And I'm going to teach on this about breaking and destroying all kinds of strongholds, bitterness, hatred, cynicism, negativity, a wrong view of things, holding grudges, unforgiveness, all of those things need to be broken. I'm going to do a whole teaching just upon about those five or six or seven things. And I would have liked to have done it now, but the Holy Ghost is somewhere else. So, it's you that ultimately decides what's going to happen next. I don't want to say this, Lord, but it's almost like you could almost say it's not even God all the time that decides everything what's next. He gives his counsel. He shows his will. He gives you his promises. But then we have to rise up to go after it to begin to get it. And then when you, you look at yourself and you say, I'm lacking this, I'm lacking that. I don't have this yet. I don't have that yet. I want this. I need this. Where is it? You have to look at yourself and say, am I, am I seeing correctly? Am I walking toward it? It all comes by sight. Because you know what? If you don't see it, you won't, you, you won't do it. I talked about, I wanted to show this. I felt the Holy Ghost tell me to say this. I, I'm reproducing this book. This book is going to come out. It's entitled... Uh, supernatural operations of spiritual conquest through the office of the prophet. The prophetic voice and the prophetic word has power to bridge uh, worlds together of the dream life, the, what people could call a utopia, you know, bliss, uh, luxury, glory, blessing, fulfillment, you know, purpose, prosperity, wealth, riches, blessing of all kinds. And you say, how can you get there? You've got to break the forces of darkness. So the miraculous will break it. But what I'm, I've started out from Matthew 15 here, the realm of the miraculous that Jesus was bringing forth changed the lives of people. But he had to be there. He had to be anointed. He had to apply himself. And then things began to happen because of that. But this thing about correction and direction is also a realm of the miraculous that I don't think many people talk about. So, 119 again, Isaiah. Be willing and obedient. To do what? Where you're called, where you're assigned. Adjust your mind, adjust your mindset. Have a better outlook on it. Speak to the earth, speak to the universe. Speak to people. Speak across... Uh, you know, lines of, of uh, every kind of thing and existence of everything that's there to, to, to favor you, to favor me, and to benefit, to benefit us. And then things begin to change. And until you do that, there's a realm of it, you know, you won't see it all. What you want to see, you won't have the possession of it. There's a realm of Possession that comes from, man, there's angels here. I just saw them right now, right here. Oh, God, yes. Wow. Father, let your angels take these words that I'm speaking and go and make them happen. I, I prophesy and declare that everybody good is coming our way. Everybody that's in the way is getting out of the way. Everything good is, is uh, happening for us, and that's how, it, that's how it is. I wrote another book. It's coming out in a reprint and expanded edition called The Laws of Success. And this is very extraordinarily powerful. And a reprint also of the benefits of excellence. Like when you walk in excellence and have things organized in the realm of excellence, things begin to attract 
people out there. You know, the, the Lord spoke to me about this scripture. He says, man looks on the outer appearance, but God looks on the heart. And the Lord shouted at me. So many years ago, he told me this. He said, he shouted at me. He says, I said, my son, Thomas, that man looks on the outer appearance. So you have to make room for that. I mean, you have to acknowledge that and work with that. This doesn't say, well, God knows my heart. It doesn't matter. No, it does matter. What, what, what people see and perceive about you. Now, another book is uh, 66 Prophecies I Delivered by the Holy Ghost over the nation of Kenya. These have come to pass, and they're yet still in motion. And when I read through this, I found things that are... Uh, applicable to the nation and also to myself. Very, very, very powerful book. Wow, it's got some full color things in there. This is going to reprint and this has got, well, you know, pe people need this. There's another book um, that's a compilation of all the prophecies over the nation of Kenya. Look at this documents right here, how thick this is. You see how this, this is like 50 pages. 40, 50 pages, just an A4. This is just from whatever. And there's more. And the, the predictions and prophetic things where God spoke things into existence over the nation of Kenya when there was nothing in manifestation like this. People couldn't even fathom it in their minds. Major leaders have stood up on platforms in front of thousands with the greatest churches, my friends, and they res we respect each other so highly to respect the grace of my life. They said, when I was saying these things, they shook their heads and said, how could this be in our Kenya? How could this even, be, how could this even happen? And sure enough, they happened. So I have people from the government, including the president and the president's wife and the deputy president and the deputy president's wife and all the governors and uh, government spokesmen and other people, they're all... They're all, and, and, and all of the other operatives in the government, and then great business leaders, great spiritual leaders. I use that term lightly because some are not that spiritual. But uh, uh, people in what you call the mountain of religion uh, or the faith, and, and they're waiting. Um, I'm, I'm, I'm doing something great. I'm performing a service to put this in a book that everybody can have and read. All right, my time is ticking. I'm about to head to two events that I need to get to. But um, So when you're praying, it brings a realm of protection. Then you, I want to look at two scriptures quickly. Job 42, 10 to 16. It talks about how Job prayed for his friends. He prayed for others, and then things began to happen. Okay, and I'm going to add a third one. But there's another scripture in Isaiah 58 and also Psalm 41. You could look these up. Isaiah 58 says, when you reach out to the afflicted soul, God will turn on your, I'm paraphrasing it. God will turn on your light in your nighttime. When you reach out to the afflicted soul, someone that can't help themselves and you help them, you're doing the work of God. In the, you know, you're bringing the work of God and the power of God into their life through provision, through help or whatever. It's good to help people. It's good to keep giving. Kabra shakaram. I feel the anointing right now. This. This Hebrews 6.10 says, God is not unjust to forget our labor of love. As we help others, God will help us. <laughs> the things you wanted. Kanchela sombo randalaba. Man, the anointing is falling. Shumbara arande rara sha brateka chila saito sakeheita. Father, bring this into reality. Psalm 41 talks about to the one who gives out to the poor, the Lord will help him back. The Bible says also in another place, when you give to the poor, you lend to the Lord and he will repay. Now in the realms of giving, a repayment is a repayment. I used to think it was multiplication, but it didn't say that. You give, God will give you back, but it'll also bless you because he said he'll turn on light for you when you're having trouble. As you sow, you'll reap. Of course, that's always multiplied in one way or another. But if you really want to, in the biblical economics, the order of biblical economics, you want to increase, you want to sow seed because he talked about 30, 60, 100, and even 1,000 times, becoming 1,000 times more. And also then the tithe in Malachi 3, 10 to 12 
Bring all the tithes into the storehouse that there'll be meat in my house. And prove me now here with, saith the Lord of hosts, if I'll not open up the windows of heaven and pour you out a blessing that there's not room enough to receive it. And I'll rebuke the devourer for your sake, and I'll make you even a delightsome land for me, for my glory, says the Lord. Now, you, you, you know, think about that. Think about that. I said that by the Holy Ghost. So you, 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 you got to understand that the, the ways of increase is through giving out. When you let go of something that's in your hand, God begins to bring you back something that uh, will... Enrich your life in the hugest way. That's another how-to. How to break evil, replace it with good. You know what? You can never forget the trouble you've had before. There's an old song. Nobody knows the trouble I've seen. The old hymn in the, in the church in America, in the southern churches. You don't know the trouble I've seen. Huh? Climbing up the rough side of the mountain, swing low, sweet chariot, coming to take me home. Take me out of here. It's too hard, you know. And even they wrote these songs to console themselves, you know. But how do you, how do you get out of the dilemma of a problem by replacing it with a solution? It's a replacement thing. You don't coexist. Let me tell you something. The good when it comes so strong in your life, it will push out the bad. Automatically, the bad can't stay. Can't stay in your mind, can't stay in your psyche, can't stay in your environment, can't stay in your relationships, can't stay in your arena. Can't. They have to go. Why? Because it's too much blessing. What did Moses say? What did Moses say? Lord, please, we can't count it all. Remember, he's the one that said, Lord, there's too much happening here. We can't handle this. We're going to put all the rest of the stuff. It was Moses who became a god to Pharaoh. It was Moses who went to uh, lead the children of Israel out, and they took the wealth of the nation. They were blessed. How did they carry all that stuff? They needed to fill their carts, fill everything, put them on camels or whatever they did, the horses and however they carried stuff. They had so much treasure because the Lord opened his hand to bless him. Now, God also did that as a favor to them to let them forget about the trouble they had. Let's say they, got, let's say they escaped, the Egyptians, right? They were going toward the Red Sea. The Red Sea was there. God parted it. Lord led them across, and then he drowned the horse and the rider in the sea, in the Red Sea there, when he let the waters go back upon them as they were chasing them, because Pharaoh said, go ahead. Then he thought to himself, what did I do? He told his army, go, go, no, go get them back. He had a lapse of judgment there, but that was the open door for them to get moving. God touched him, smote him to do that. Just like he smote them all with the ten plagues, that was like the eleventh or the twelfth thing, whatever it was, to just let the people begin to go. Then they chased them down and then they got drowned. But what if they got to the other side and they had nothing left? They had nothing. Now they're hungry, they're tired, their, their psyches and spirits are wounded from all of the problems they had over the years being the slaves of the Egyptians. And now they still have to look for anything to have. God solved that problem. It was a replacement of their lack with God's abundance, and it even came from the Egyptians that held them captive. Why does God say in Proverbs 13, 22, the wealth of the wicked is laid up for the righteous? Because it really is. It's there for us. This morning, the Lord spoke to me again through uh, uh, something I saw. Proverbs 10, 22, the blessing of the Lord makes you me rich and adds no sorrow or trouble. Yesterday, the Lord spoke to me. Last night, he said to me, son, I'm going to bless you. Again, I'm in a vertical arena from me to him, him to me, and then out through there. I'm not meddling or getting muddied up in anybody's mud, muddy life. I'm not doing it. 
I resign from adversity, affliction. Even in my mind of being burdened about seeing everybody the way they are. There comes a time when you just take your eyes off of that and look at God and look at what he's doing, what he's doing in me. That's not selfish either. That's it's brilliant because it gives my focus the chance to be my focus to produce the destiny that I'm going toward. Do you get that? This is so powerful. Ma pron shala samborin telasa. Another scripture, um, Proverbs, uh, uh, Job 42, 10 to 16, to, 10 to the end, I call it. Job got blessed with so much, it replaced his trouble. Proverbs 10, 31. Proverbs, did I say 10? I, didn't, I meant to say 31, 10 to 31. Proverbs 31, 10 to 31 talks about a virtuous woman who can find. But guess what? The one that finds gets blessed. It's a replacement for what wasn't there before. All of these things are promises from Scripture. Look at Deborah, the judge in Barak in Judges chapter 1. She began to go and whip the enemy. Look at uh, Jael, Jael, who put the, the, the stake, the, the, the metal nail, whatever, through the head of the enemy and nailed them to the ground and destroyed that stronghold. In the nation of Chad, we just saw there was a coup attempt, and, and by divine providence, this all happened by prayer, the opposition leader got popped in the head, and I have the picture in my phone. The opposition leader with a big hole in the side of his head, laying there, dead. And where is he now? He was even a forceful proponent of another religion. So... But guess what? When you, and then you know what the, you know what the government forces did. He had a big house. He had a big building, that was like his headquarters. They went and knocked it down in one day. It was gone. I have the before and I have the before and after pictures were sent to me. Now there's just there's just flat land there where his thing was. The whole order of opposition has been pulverized. You see. Now if it was still all there. The guy's still there, his thing is still there, his following is still there, his movement is there. It gets diffused because God has a plan for the nation of Chad even to have a Christian surge of an uprising. And I'm praying. These, these, are, these are nations that are civilly run by, uh, you know, in, in the name of, uh, of other religions. So, of another religion. So, you, y- you want to see that Evangelism is illegal in many ways. So how, how, how are things going to change? And the Lord spoke to me, and I, I prophesy this over Chad. I, I speak it over every African country. Let's focus on Africa. For, 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 we say this for the whole world, but let's focus on Africa right now. The powerful men and women that are going to be raised up to break things in the realm of the Spirit, but they first have to see them broken in their own lives. And the way to do that is by the realm of God's correction and direction and sight. So, 119, in wrapping this up here. Isaiah 119, if you be willing and obedient, obedience and willingness will cause you to eat the good of the land. It comes by sight. You have to see it in your mind, see it in your heart. You've got to say, well, now I'm going to uh, walk this out and really get blessed. And God, when you, when you decide to do more of that, God will really bless you. He has to. I know the plans I have for you, Jeremiah 29, 11. Plans to prosper you, not to harm you. To prosper you and give you, give you a great expected end, the destiny, the destination that you have. God's just going to begin to cause these things to happen for you as you walk on with him and his plan and his purpose. Can you say amen? So, 1 John 1, 9, another 1, 19. It came, it came together as well. I was speaking with this apostle. Friend, great man. And he has possessions in the untold. This man owns miles of property. 
many kilometers, like upwards of 100 kilometers of property. And then another one that's like many miles long and other ones and all kinds of things for industries. It's, it's, it's astounding. And why does God set people up like that? To have the treasures of wealth that we can advance the kingdom around the world. Part of the big plan of God for anybody that's going to do anything big is to give them great resources. But where you missed it, this, the other 119 is 1 John 1 and 9. 1, 1, 9. Confess your sin to the Lord. That means omission, what you didn't do, what you didn't focus on enough. Say, I'm, I, not just say, I'm sorry, but I'm going to change it from today. I'll never do that again. And I'll do everything you want me to do. Or sin, a sin of commission, something you did, you weren't supposed to do. Whatever it was, wherever you missed the mark, you know. Wherever you didn't do what you were supposed to do, or you did something you weren't supposed to do, pray this prayer every day. I'm going to help really help people. This is a very how-to instructional teaching. You see, I love to do that because I, I would hate to be the guy that just makes the noise and says, well, here's the presentation of the gospel and miracles, and then you need me, and then let's pray, and God's going to give you the breakthrough. Hey, well, how do I walk that out, bro, sis? How do I walk it out? M-M-L-G, W-W-O-G. How do I walk that out, M-W-O-G? How do I walk it out? What do I do? I'm giving you how-tos all through this here. Pray this prayer. Lord, forgive me from all sin and cleanse me from all unrighteousness. Does everybody sin? Yes. Is everybody a sinner by nature? No. We are righteous by nature. Do we miss it along the way in certain areas? Yes. How do you resolve that? First, you've got to be willing and obedient, 119 Isaiah to the calling of God, to the mission that he has for you. And then you got to keep your, your whole life cleansed before him. And you know what I think about all the time? I think about this all the time. I'm, by saying this, I'm going to put this in your mind and help you forever. Let this, I pray the anointing on this word, right, I'm going to say right now, goes so, go so strongly in you that you never forget it every day of your life. You never can forget it. I think about what if the Lord comes today? What if the Lord comes right now? What if people walk around almost blindly like they don't see tomorrow or maybe they're hoping for a better tomorrow. They, they'll make a good title for a religious broadcast. Hope for a better tomorrow. Da, da, da. Yeah, hope, wishing and hoping. Yeah, everybody hopes for that. But what are you doing to get there? But what if the Lord came right now? I just said that prayer out of my mouth again, so I'm clean right now. I'm, I was clean before I started. You know, hey, I, I ain't doing nothing funny in my life. I'm living a holy life. Listen, but, but you know what? Every time we need to be conscious of the presence of God. What am I doing to further the mission? And what am I doing to make sure that I'm totally in, immersed and connected and flooded over with His glory and His presence? And what brings His presence? Prayer and praise and worship. We need to get into more of that. And we're going to do that in the coming days. The Lord is... Give me that strong thought. I can't wait. And the kind of music I'm going to have in my thing is going to be phenomenal. Really, really high quality. Father, I have to prophesy this now. Put this into motion and give us the people right now. We focused on your word, your truth, getting out to the world, building things. But the teams, the realms of worship and praise and even of intercession, intercessors. I sometimes neglect looking for intercessors because I've seen many times they're very strange people. Uh, some are very strange and in, in, in a, not in a good way. And I just wonder about some people and I don't know how to, how to handle that sometimes. But we need to figure that out. Because there needs to be a realm of prayer that you just open it up and <laughs> someone said, what about strange, this man of God was, was asked the question, what about strange fire? He said, I'd rather see any kind of fire than no fire. <laughs> Let something be stirred up and God can work out whatever needs to be fixed along the way. But no fire, that's a tragedy. Nothing happening, that's terrible. The expansion, yeah, Lord, the, the expansion of vision 
the expansion that you'll experience in the realm of blessing, provisions, and elevation, enlightenment, revelation, manifestation for advancement will cause you to increase in the plan and order of God and the things that you've dreamed about doing and that God's dreamed for you will actually now happen. Yes, Lord. Father, thank you for the touch of heaven. I got to go. We'll see you on the next broadcast. Make sure you're sending your tithe, your offerings, your seed. The links are in the headings of the titles of the messages, and they'll also be on the screen here. Put them on there right now. How to sow. How to sow. Just put it there and leave it on because I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to get off here. Just put the banner there and leave it, leave it on till I'm, until we click off. Just leave it on there. And uh, these are the ways you can sow into this anointing, PayPal and Pesa, Cash App. And if you need like to do Western Union cash, whatever, by request, you can, what, you can send me a message on where to send it and how, you know, like the name to send it to. And then you could send me the MT money control transfer number, NCTN number to, uh, to do that. If you need banking information for like a wire or something like that on a larger scale, you can contact me and I'll give you the details on how to do it. People in Kenya, you know the M-Pesa system very well. The numbers are there. And I'll just give you one right now, 0706164191. You can sew that way. And uh, PayPal, it's uh, paypal.me forward sign Thomas Manton. Very simple. PayPal dot M E forward sign Thomas Manton and that's a direct way to sow. You can also go on our website thomasmanton.com and the ways to sow uh, are live and active there right now. By the way we've done some work on our website. Everybody visit the site again. There's a lot of new things there you'll see. Some people might have hit it before and the, some things were yet to be updated. We're updating them now. Many have been and many more are coming. So thomasmanton.com is a happening place. Visit it again, everybody, and see uh, the new features and the new information and new things that are on the website. You can sew through that channel also. Father, thank you for the power of, of, of correction and direction that's going to bring people into the realm of seeing what they need to see that they can actually take steps toward their destiny and move into manifestation of your blessings in Jesus' name. More later. Love you. Got to go. Talk to you on the next one. Be blessed. I'm praying for you in Jesus' name. Expecting also for the victory. I want to hear your testimonies. You could write me with your testimonies. And this is very... I'm a very interactive ministry. You can, by the way, you can send a WhatsApp to the number plus 254-706-164191. We can dialogue that way. You can uh, direct messenger me on Facebook, on the Messenger app. I will see your message and reply. Uh, WhatsApp is great. WhatsApp is better. Use zero. Plus 254-706-164191. It'll be on the screen. You'll be seeing it. Uh, you can write me there and I will see it, pray for you, and reply. Uh, also, the book in hard copy is available, Prophetic Keys to Successful Living. And the forward was written by the illustrious Archbishop Harrison K. Nanga. Uh, three pages about me and the anointing we carry. And this is a book, an encyclopedia, A to Z on success. You will be blessed by this book. Make sure you write me, write, text me on that uh, Plus two five four seven zero six one six four one nine one, with the word book, and I will. You can text or WhatsApp to that number, and I will show you how you can get this book in Jesus' name. Be blessed. I'm 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 delighted to share the revelation of how you can see your way out of trouble. God's power in the miraculous is also directing you and opening your eyes to see as much as it is. These are the manifestations that we look for. That's a manifestation of God in itself. Walk it out and prosper now in Jesus' name. Greater than you've ever seen. Ephesians 3.20.
God said, I'll do above and beyond what you could ask or think. Do you believe God for that? I do. And I want to see it happen in your life in Jesus' name. Be blessed. Love you much. Dear brethren, in Psalms 119, 105, the Bible says, Your word is a lamp to my feet and a light to my path. Truly, God has sent prophet Dr. Thomas Manton IV to proclaim and declare his word of abundance and prosperity prophetically unto the nations. Thus, brothers and sisters in Christ, I urge you, just as the Bible says in Matthew 10, 41, whoever welcomes a prophet as a prophet will receive a prophet reward. Let us welcome and embrace the prophet of God by supporting his ministry. You can sow a seed, you can send your love offering, you can support or partner in the ministry program using the details displayed on your screen. For when the prophet of God decrees a blessing upon you, indeed, you shall be blessed.